Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So our goal today is to go through a practice question. I've got a practice question queued up for you related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. This is specifically related to pharmacology, so you'll not want to miss that. But before I get to that, just a quick thank you. Thank you for what you do. Appreciate the efforts you are putting in to not only become an excellent test taker, an excellent NPT test taker, but also to become an excellent clinician. It really will bless not only your life, but the lives of your patients. It's going to be something that will will be undoubtedly one of the greatest things you ever do. And it's something that, again, I thank my lucky stars every day that I get the opportunity to practice as a PT and then to help you to pass your exam so that you can practice as a PT, get on the other side of that, the big board exam so you can be cash positive. So anyway, super, super happy to be here with you today. Thank you again for all that you do. Uh, I did want to mention a big thank you to those of you who stopped by the booth over at CSM, the combined sections meeting. We always have a booth and we're always giving away free stuff. And I wanted to give you all, the podcast listeners, an opportunity to cash in on that free 99. I, I do tease students that that's the best price, right? Free 99. So to to really cash in on that free, the free material that we gave away at CSM, this is a free practice exam plus we added some free study material in addition to that. So for instance, we've got a few sessions, a few recorded video sessions about the cardiovascular and pulmonary system, about the neuro system, about the muscular system. Plus I did post pretty much all I've got about study, study strategies. So when you are studying for the exam, for instance, one of the things you'll, you'll see come up time and again is that the number one evidence-based way to prepare for a standardized physical, standardized physical, a standardized examination, whether it be a physical therapy exam or anything, a standardized exam, the very best way to prepare number one evidence-based way is practice questions. And so that's why in this podcast, we focus in on practice questions to make your preparation as effective as possible. Plus I I've got all this free stuff that I want to give to you as podcast listeners. So the easiest way to cash in on that is to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you'll be able to take advantage of the free practice exam plus the free access to a a selection of our video library that I think you'll really enjoy. So totally free, no commitment necessary. You just have to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, sign up there, and you'll receive instructions on how to access all of that free material. So today I've got a practice question. This is related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. This is the third largest system on the exam. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this question. I'll read it to you and then we'll talk about it together. During examination, a patient's chart indicates that they have been prescribed lisinopril or Prinavil. Which of the following primary effects is this medication most likely to elicit? So during examination, a patient's chart indicates they've been prescribed lisinopril or Prinavil. Which of the following primary effects is this medication most likely to elicit? One, increase in formation and excretion of urine. Two, increase in aldosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex. Three, inhibition of vascular smooth muscle cell contraction. Or four, inhibition of beta adrenergic receptors. So again, during examination, a patient's chart indicates they've been prescribed lisinopril. Which of the following primary effects is this medication most likely to elicit? Increase in formation and excretion of urine increase in aldosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex, inhibition of vascular smooth muscle cell contraction, or four, inhibition of beta adrenergic receptors. Well, so this patient, they've got lisinopril. Lisinopril is what's considered an ACE inhibitor, an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So it's on the list of medications that reduce a patient's blood pressure. As far as the primary effect of an ACE inhibitor, such as lisinopril, This will inhibit the contraction of smooth muscle cell or vascular smooth muscle cells. So what we're talking about here is that the smooth muscle cells around the the arterioles, arteries and arterioles, will relax such that you have a reduction in systemic vascular resistance or systemic blood pressure. So ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril work to reduce blood pressure by blocking the angiotensin converting enzyme, that's the ACE, the angiotensin converting enzyme, 
that directly results in the relaxation of vascular smooth muscle cells. So we're talking about a, a, an inhibition of vascular smooth muscle cell contraction. So lisinopril is an ACE inhibitor. Now, the, as far as a willism here, my silly way to remember ACE inhibitors is that if you can remember the month of April, April meaning that ACE inhibitors, so ACE inhibitors, ACE inhibitors are related, are typically ending, they typically end in pril, P-R-I-L. So if you can remember the month of April, you'll remember ACE inhibitors always end in pril. So lisinopril and allopril, they typically have the suffix P-R-I-L. And so ACE inhibitors are uh, like lisinopril or enalapril, they end in pril. So if you remember the month of April, you'll remember that ACE inhibitors end in pril. Now these other answer options, increase in formation and excretion of urine. This is what a diuretic does. One of the most common ones we see is furosemide, which is also known as Lasix. It is a diuretic leading to the excretion, formation and excretion of urine, reducing the overall blood volume. Uh, option two, the increase in aldosterone secretion from the, the adrenal cortex. Rather, ACE inhibitors have the opposite effect. They limit aldosterone production. Aldosterone is, think of it this way, aldosterone is the hormone that, that promotes sodium resorption. It holds on to sodium. So aldosterone and sodium retention go hand in hand. So if you were to hold on to sodium, it means that you'll hold on to blood volume. So increasing aldosterone will result in an increase in blood volume and will not, will not have your desired effect. So actually ACE inhibitors have the opposite effect. They reduce or block the secretion of aldosterone leading to, uh, I guess in some ways they have that indirect effect on the formation and excretion of urine. But it's through aldosterone that they get there that they limit the production of aldosterone and by limiting the production of aldosterone, it permits urine to be created and excreted in a, in a normal fashion. So again, ACE inhibitors, their primary effect is to reduce the angiotensin converting enzyme, which relaxes the vascular smooth muscle cells. Uh, the final incorrect answer option four is the inhibition of beta adrenergic receptors. That's what a beta blocker does. So my silly way to remember that, beta blockers, if you're going to play basketball, you have to have an allal, and so I just think of BB, like beta blockers, basketball, allal. So it's kind of a rhyming scheme there, basketball, allal. You'll know that beta blockers typically end in allal, such as metoprolol or propanolol. These are examples of beta blockers. They do indeed result in the overall reduction in blood pressure because they block the sympathetic nervous system. However, that's not the primary primary effect of lisinopril. That's the question. The question asked, what is the primary effect of lisinopril? Well, it's going to reduce smooth muscle cell contraction in the in the arteries and arterioles. This is through uh, blocking the angiotensin converting enzyme. So blocking that cascade that increases blood pressure. So back to the bottom line here, lisinopril is an ACE inhibitor. It is, the way you remember that is the month of April, ACE inhibitor ends in pril. And then the primary effect of that is that it will limit or inhibit the vascular smooth muscle cell contraction. So that's what lisinopril does. Excellent. So as we come to a conclusion, I just wanted to share something that I thought was kind of funny. So when I was at CSM, I talked to a lot of students. It was super fun. We, we talked to well over a thousand students that stopped by. I hope you'll stop by if you ever attend the combined sections meeting. So this one was in Houston. Next year, it'll be in, in um, Anaheim. So if you're going to make a trip to CSM, you may as well come and visit us there. We usually have freebies and giveaways there. Again, you all can take advantage of the freebie we gave away this year by going to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, get a free practice exam and some free videos. But the, the fun little story I wanted to mention is that I had, I had a lot of people stop by and say they listened to the podcast and it, uh, big thank you. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for stopping by. I had one guy in particular, he stopped by and I, he said, thank you for the podcast. Really appreciate that. It was super fun to talk for a moment. And then I asked if he had left a review. He said he really liked the podcast if he'd left a, a five-star review on the podcast. And he said he hadn't. And I asked what it would take to invite him to leave a five-star review. And he said he would. And I asked when he was going to do that. And he said, well, here, let me write myself a note to leave a review. And I was teasing him as he was pulling out his phone to, to write the note to remind him to leave a review. 
I said, you know that it's going to take less time to just leave the review than to write yourself a note to leave a review. And sure enough, he pulled up Spotify and it's just the little three dots right next to the podcast. It says rate this, rate this podcast or putting, clicking your stars. You can just instantly click in five stars. You don't have to write anything. It's just one little quick tap, or I guess two little quick taps and you're done. So that's my invitation to you all who are listening to this podcast right now. If you haven't yet, it really just takes one second. And like I teased this guy about, it, it will take longer to write yourself a note to leave a review than to just tap the little three, three dots or additional menu option and tap the five stars. It really just takes, takes one second to do. But it makes a huge difference. As we're trying to get the podcast out, as we're trying to help students cross the finish line with the NPT, it really makes a huge difference so that we can not only help you, but also help others along the way. If you're listening to this podcast on YouTube, it only takes just a moment to, to leave us a, a quick thumbs up or subscribe to the channel over there. Piece of cake. Again, these are really, really small things you can do that will not only affect and help us to, to give you the new information and new offers when they come, but also helps other students to find these free resources, which again, think about that that there are some students who just don't have a ton of resource or they're looking for a little extra help to pass the exam, that quite literally you will be helping future generations of PTs across the finish line just by taking that one second to leave us a review. So I would really appreciate it. And yeah, I, I will thank you in advance. I get sometimes students who will send me an email and they, they'll put TIA in their, in their signature line. Thanks in advance. So I'll give you all that right here. Thanks in advance. Plus, I did also want to mention that we've got some more freebies that'll be coming your way. Again, this is the, the great student pricing, right? Free 99. So other freebies that'll be coming your direction. The only way to catch hold of these is go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. So sign up for our, our podcast newsletter. And the cool part here is that we've teamed up with Summit Professional Education as a continuing education provider. And we'll be offering some free continuing ed post exam as well. And that's something I've, I, I've harped on a lot throughout this podcast is I not only want to get you across the finish line, but I also wanna make you, make you, I want to help you become an excellent clinician as well. So that involves not only your passing of the NPT, but also becoming a lifelong learner, lifelong learner. So for instance, like when I got my orthopedic certification specialty a few years ago, I felt like that was a, a huge boost in not only my clinical practice, but also my uh, we'll just call it my sharpness. I was trying to stay sharp on some of the current material, try to give my patients the very best uh, outcomes possible. And so that's why it's important to become a lifelong learner. And that's why we've teamed up with Summit Professional Education as a, as a continuing education provider. I think you'll really like it. We've got some freebies we'll be giving away over there. So again, uh, that's the great student pricing, right? Is to have everything be free. So we've got some free stuff. We'll be sending your direction there. The only way to access that is to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. Make sure you've signed up there. So please be sure to watch for that as we send out more free stuff. I guess that's the, the theme of this episode is free stuff. We're just handing away free stuff. So free practice exam, free video material, free continuing education, free practice questions. Yeah, you name it, <laughs> we're giving it away for free. So again, one solid you can do for me is just to quickly leave a five-star review wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. And then I will be sending you out a ton of free stuff. So be sure to check that out. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Thank you again so much for all you do. I hope you have a safe and fabulous day. Keep a grin on your chin. I know a lot of you are listening to this podcast while you're on your way to clinical. You, maybe you're out for, for a little exercise, whatever it is you're doing. Thank you for what you do. Really appreciate that. I'll catch you all in the next one. Hope you have a fabulous day, everyone. Take care. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.